families are blessed. Your children are blessed. Your generation is blessed. Your jobs are blessed. Your businesses are blessed. Your destiny is blessed. In the name of Jesus.
Glory be to Jesus. Welcome to the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, I see a lot of you have traveled. We thank God for those who have traveled. And uh, some of you may be traveling this coming week. If anybody is traveling this week, raise your hand so we can pray for you wherever you are. Glory to Jesus. We pray grace for you as you travel. We pray the blood of Jesus upon your lives. We ask the hand of God to be upon you on the road, on the flight, whether you cross the river or you are walking, whether you are driving your own car, whether you are on the bus, I speak protection for you in the name of Jesus. The same time we see you, we shall see you again when you come back. In Jesus' name, amen. Say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Last week was so special. I want to thank you. I want to take the moment to appreciate you and I know some people are not here for what you did for me. Uh, you celebrated me. You blessed me with uh, your finances, your gifts, uh, your blessings, the messages I received on, on uh, Facebook, WhatsApp, and uh, direct messages. I want to let you know that I read them all and I think I did my best to read respond to all of them. Amen. And uh, I want you to know I appreciate it so much. I'm grateful to our people like you who understand love, who understand to love the Father. Uh, your speeches were awesome. And the servants of God who are here, we are so blessed to see what happens here. Amen. Amen. I shared with you three reasons why we honor the Father. Amen. Remember those three reasons will be a blessing in your life and God will uh, keep you in his hands because when you honor a spiritual father, you're also honoring the one who sent him to you and that is God Almighty. Hallelujah. So I bless you and I thank God for you. I also want to thank my family. I went to bed um, that night at uh, 2 a.m. After that, there was some dinner to do, and uh, they, uh, we had a good time. And uh, then I, I stayed over to just read the messages. So I went to bed at 2 a.m. It was a good experience, amen. amen. Normally, those are the hours witches are trying to do their stuff. So they couldn't because I was awake, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are blessed. Amen. I love you so much. I appreciate you so much. You're so special in my life. I don't lose the relationship. When you have a good relationship, don't lose it. Amen. Glory be to God. Say, he's talking about me. Say, I'm so special. Amen. All right. Are you ready for the word? We give God the glory for today. It's a beautiful day. And uh, uh, on this journey, we... I have been looking at some things that God has been doing in our lives as a ministry. And uh, starting from last week, uh, God has been uh, prompting me to continue to encourage you on uh, the dynamics of progress. The dynamics of progress, divine progress is our theme this year. And there are so many dynamics uh, of progress. Uh, first of all, before I go too far, I want to just... Uh, ask you to appreciate those who are watching us online. Amen. I appreciate them with your hands. We've uh, been praying for one another. God bless them every time they listen to us. Amen. So last week, uh, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 16, uh, you did something that maybe you know why. Some of you may not know why. Uh, and, uh, in the Bible, we notice that uh, a gift is relevant. A gift is relevant, and who you give a gift to is also important because you can give a gift to anybody, anytime, but uh, if you know where to place the gift, there is grace for favor as well. There is grace for divine favor. Hallelujah. So Proverbs chapter 18, verse 16 says something about a gift. Say something about a gift. And I want you to remember this, whenever you give a gift, sometimes we give a gift knowingly, with understanding, sometimes we don't have understanding. But uh, what you did yesterday provoked something, uh, last week rather, provoked something in your life. 
And so the Bible says, a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. A man's gift makes space, makes room for them and brings them before great men. So when you give, as you have given in my life over my birthday, God is creating space for you. Space that you don't have. Room that you don't have. An atmosphere that you never had before. So there are things that you don't have now, but by the gift that you gave, the Bible confirms that your gift makes room. The gift has the ability and the grace of God to create something for you that you don't have. Amen. So because you gave and you gave to a servant of God, the Bible also confirms that that gift that you gave uh, has the ability to open doors for you to meet men who are greater than your level, men who are at a higher level than where you are, men who have done well than what you have done, men who are of influence. Uh, now, so this is wonderful to know because then you realize that what you give, uh, there is a certain favor that is coming upon your life. There's a favor upon your life that is coming to open doors for you. Some people's doors are closed. Some people have never been promoted in their lives are on the same position for the last 10, 15 years. Some people's doors are locked. There's a spiritual padlock that nobody has been able to identify. So in God's love for us, we realize the mysteries of the word of God and the power that they do carry. So one of the mysteries is to know that through the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. The blood of Jesus is a weapon of warfare. The anointing removes burdens and destroys yokes. But now, the Bible specifically zeroes in on the fact that a gift, a gift has the potential to open doors. And I don't know. I know that you know. But I don't know, I may not know the kind of door you want to be opened. By your giving, that door has no resistance against you. Because the gift will be standing in the spiritual realm at your door. At your door of favor. At your door of progress. At the door of your breakthrough. And so that door will open for you. That's why when God says it is a season of divine favor, it's a season of divine progress, it's a season of divine elevation, you may be looking at uh, who you are, what you have not achieved, what you have not done, but a gift recognized by the Holy Spirit also has the ability to open that great door that you want. I want you to know that that door will open in Jesus' name. That door will open in the mighty name of Jesus. So on this journey, we want to continue to look at some of the uh, keys that a gift does. A gift can be in the uh, form of finances. A gift can be in the form of uh, a normal gift, something you wrap and you gave. A gift can be a form of a talent that you have. A gift can be a form of a uh, your ability to do certain things. And so it is in those abilities that we locate the grace for favor. Every one of us is loaded with something to do, something that you are able to perform, some ability. Some of you can make money easily, just like that. Some of you are identified for promotion easily. You, you, you have to work hard, you have to do certain things in order to get to that level. However, whatever your gift is, as an individual, there are areas in which a gift will operate to produce favor in your life. Amen. And everybody needs favor. Amen. There's no one who can say, I do not need favor. No matter the level you are at, you can never say, I do not need favor. No matter you have made it in life, you still need 
another level of favor. So today, by God's grace, we're going to look at some of the potentials of favor. We're going to see what uh, has happened to some of our people in the Bible who understood the grace to give. Amen. Number one, we will look at uh, Ruth. Ruth chapter 2, verse 13. Ruth had favor with a man who was very wealthy. This is a woman who, uh, when you read her story, it was not a very good story. Uh, she, she had a lot of problems. She was a young woman. She was broken hearted uh, because uh, she lost her husband and she didn't have a child. And so she had to come back to her village. And as she did, uh, this young man uh, was gifted in working. Was gifted in working. As I did, talked about that, saving. Amen. As a, one of the attributes of favor. So Ruth uh, in chapter 2 of 13, of verse 13, found favor in the sight of a wealthy man. In the sight of a wealthy man. And some of you, you need that favor. You need favor to connect to somebody who is wealthy for your progress. Let me tell you, there are people who are wealthy on this planet Earth, not for their sake only. But for somebody they may not know, somebody who they have never met before, and God, by his grace, connects you to that person who is worthy, and you are lifted to God. They are called divine helpers. Amen. Amen. Ruth chapter 2, verse 13. So verse 13 says, Then she said, Let me find favor in your sight. Let me find favor in your sight. Whenever you give a gift, your desire is that you must find favor. Don't just give a gift and leave it there and say whatever happens, happens. Your desire is to have favor. The man you give favor to may not have the favor you want, but God, who opens a door, who showed us in problems, that your gift has a potential to open doors for you. So whenever you give a gift, whatever type of gift, your desire must be to say, Lord, let me find favor. Hallelujah. Let me find favor. Favor is very important because favor overlooks your past. Favor does not care whether you are educated or not educated. Favor does not care whether you are dark, you are tall, you are big, you are thin, you are young, you are an adult. Favor can come to anybody, anytime. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And we know that God is the one who releases a grace for favor. But we are the ones who have to apply the spirit of desire. Let me find favor. In this year, one of your prayers must be to say, God, let me find favor in your sight. Amen. Hallelujah. Because you need the favor. So this young woman, she said, let me find favor in your sight. And the Bible says at mealtime, she sat down and ate, and she was favored to be among the reapers. This was a woman who had lost everything. This was a young lady who, the future looked dark after loss of her family. She never saw anything beautiful in her life. Her life was a life of struggle. Her husband was sick. She took care of her husband for a long time until he passed on. And she never had a child. It was a journey which was difficult. Hallelujah. 
But she comes to a point where she realizes that her life is not over. Because of that gift, she is able to again see that God is a God of favor. Hallelujah. God is a God of favor. And I want you to know that through your gift, you can say, Lord, let me find favor. Let me hear you say it now. Say it louder than your neighbor. Why do you need favor? There are many reasons why we need favor. Because some people have struggled in their lives like this woman. And so what was missing was favor. When favor comes on your life, all that struggle is forgotten. Amen. All that discouragement is forgotten. Amen. All the shame that you go through when favor comes upon your life, God gives you the grace to rise to a level where you never thought you'd ever be. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I saw it one of my daughters yesterday. I said, what is happening to your promotion? And she told me, Daddy, uh, uh, well, I'm still praying. So I said to her, I said, you need to pray that God will arrest whoever is responsible in your company to lift you. You need to pray, Father, mention his name or her name, Mr. Soso, the general manager, whoever it is, so that favor will lift you to that throne. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. So favor is for if, each one of us. Favor is for everyone, especially if you have gone through a life like Ruth, you are a candidate. Amen? You are a candidate for favor. Now, of course, you may not have gone through a life of uh, Ruth, but you may have gone through something different as well. All right, let's look at Esther. Esther chapter 2. Number 2 is Esther. Esther had favor as well. So as Esther had favor with God, we also notice that uh, Esther had a different scenario to Ruth. This was a woman who uh, didn't get married at the time, and uh, her story is completely different. But there was something about growth that God uh, used as a gift in her life as well to obtain favor. Esther chapter 2 and verse number 15. The book of Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. Now, when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Ali, and the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go in unto the king. She required nothing but what was given the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. All right, let me summarize the story for you. The king wanted a woman to marry. Amen. He had just kicked out the other woman who misbehaved. And so there's a group of women. And these women now are being nurtured. Yesterday, the women at the meeting here, I don't know what the meeting was. I was not in the meeting. But I know it has something to do with building the women, improving on their lives, uh, how they uh, live, how they work, how they do things, how they take care of themselves, and excellence. So this was an opportunity similar to Esther to be trained among all the other women who are candidates for one man, the king. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, as they were preparing these women, all right, so there were specialists who could do hair, there were also specialists who could do nails, manicure, I think it is called, if I remember correctly, Something like that, amen. There were those who could do uh, eyelashes and so forth. So uh, particular people came and this woman uh, was done her hair, her nails, and her makeup, and the next one, and the next one. When it came to Esther, when it came to Esther, verse 15 emphasizes that Esther obtained favor in the sight of all of them that looked upon her. Did you see that? Did you see that? So Esther was identified, and as she was identified as one of the ladies passing by, the people who were attending to the girls decided this woman is special. So if they put a certain makeup on her face, they realized she can look better with a different makeup from what they applied on the others. 
If they gave a Brazilian hairstyle on the Earl uh, or the rest of them, they decided to add something on the Brazilian hairstyle on Esther, she looked different because of favor. I understand it. I understand it. So when favor comes upon you, you can be of the same tribe as everybody, but you are different. You can be of the same hairstyle as everybody, but you are different. You can wear the same clothes as everybody, but you are different. Hallelujah. You can have the same walk as everybody, but you are different. You can have the same voice, the same tone, but you are different because favor has identified you. Glory be to Jesus. That's the reason why we need what? We need favor. Amen. You can be at an interview. Everybody has got the same qualification. You need favor to identify you from being different from the rest of the people. Glory be to Jesus. Raise your hand and say, Heavenly Father, I declare over my life, may I obtain favor in the name of Jesus. May I look different. May I be different from the rest of the people. I need your favor. And I know favor is my portion in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So you may be in a crowd. You may be in Kenton Park. You may be at a certain flat where you live. You may be staying in a certain area in Johannesburg. What will identify you is favor. You need favor. You may be in a class where everybody seems like they look good. They look fair. They look better than you. What will lift you up above everybody else is called favor. Say, I need favor. Say, Holy Spirit, locate me by favor. In the name of Jesus. So this young woman was favored among the rest of them. Identified among the rest of them. Like Daniel, Meshach, and Abednego. Identified among all the young men. You need favor. You need to seek God and say, Lord, I need favor. You may be doing the same business as everybody else is doing. What will differentiate you is favor. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Don't just say, oh, no, you know, I'm selling, you know, uh, what are you selling? I'm also selling clothes from China. You need favor to do better than the others who are selling the same clothes you're selling from China. Amen. The reason why a lot of people start and they don't continue is because they miss favor. So they start something, it works for a season, for a month or two, three months or so, and then it can't continue because favor is missing. When favor is upon your life, the continuity of your elevation is also going with you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory be to Jesus. Favor does not take you in a season. It takes you in a lifestyle. Favor does not come on a short period, it allows you to keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And that's why you need favor. Hallelujah. Say, I need favor. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't pretend you need favor. Hallelujah. All right. So number two, let's look at uh, some ways in which you can obtain favor. I'm not going to mention some things that Pastor David did, all right, but just to bring out uh, some extra uh, points. Some things that you need to have favor. All right. Number one for today, you need a life, a life of serving God. A life of serving God. A life of serving God. You need to serve God. You obtain favor by serving God. One of the reasons why Pastor Dab and the team was grouping people in the house was so that you may find yourself effective. You may find yourself in a group, in a team, where you are known. You also know certain people. You see, you can come to church for years and years, and uh, you don't know people in the church. Maybe you know one or two people. It is not right, because the more people you know, you will also be influential in the group. You cannot live as an individual, as an isolated person. You need people, you need human beings around you. So you can't say, no, me, I'm too strong. I pray a lot. I am uh, 30 years old as a child of God. Uh, so no weapon fashioned against me. You still need other people to be around you. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. And some of the people around you, you may not like them, but by the grace, you'll be forced to like them because they are your brothers and your sisters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. 
Some of the people you may find a bit too quiet for you. Some of the people don't respond. You send a message, they don't respond. You will learn to deal with them. Glory be to Jesus. There are people who don't greet me. But I have learned, I don't care, I greet them. Amen. Amen. If they are angry because I greet them, that is their problem. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. There are people who may not like you, but you, you do what is right according to the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. All right. So a life of knowing God. Job chapter 10, verse 12. The more you know God, the more you start to experience the favor of God. The more you know God, the more you carry God's goodness. The more you know him, the more you enjoy to be a child of God. And a child of God is a loving child of God. Job chapter 10, verse number 12. The book of Job chapter 10 and verse 12. Thou hast granted me life and favor, and thy visitation has preserved my spirit. All right. So Job says, you have granted me what? Life. What is life? Life is only when you are living in the hands of Jehovah. If you are not living in the hands of Jehovah, you don't have life. You don't have life. True life is when you are living in the hands of Almighty God. You need to know Him. And the more you know the life of God, the more you realize that part of that life is that God allowed His Son to come and die for you and for me on the cross of Calvary. So that we may experience love. And we may also give other people that love. Amen? So, Job says that you have granted me life. Amen? It is in that life of God that you will find favor. If you struggle to find love in God, you will struggle to love somebody. If you struggle to love somebody, you will struggle to have favor. Favor comes by us loving God, and what we receive from God, we give it to others, and then favor will follow after us. Amen. There is no individual in the world, even non-believers, right, who have had favor, who don't love people. It's very rare to find a person like that. So as a child of God, Job confirms, he says, God, you have granted me life, and in that life I have found what? Favor. By your visitation, by your presence in my life, by the grace in my life, you have preserved my spirit, you have activated my spirit. Listen, there are people that you may not like. Give them an opportunity. There are people you may not love. Give them an opportunity. There are people that look different from you. Give them an opportunity. There are people who will irritate you by their habits by their manners, but give them a chance. That is where your favor is. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. The other day I had an opportunity to, to love somebody. I stopped and this guy came and uh, he's one of the street people and uh, he came to ask for 15 rands. He says, uh, can you give me 15 rands? I said, uh, you don't need 15 rands. He says, no, I need 15 rands, I want to go and buy something. I said, no, what you need is the love of Jesus. And uh, he was smoking. And then uh, I said to him, I said, put down that cigarette. And I want to introduce you to the love of Jesus. And quickly put it down and he crushed it. And then he says, now I'm attentive, talk to me. And I told him, Jesus loves you. I love Jesus, I want you to know Jesus loves you. I may not be able to see you again. Can I make a with you. He says, yeah, please pray for me. I pray for him. I said, pray after me. Lord Jesus, he said, Lord Jesus, I thank you today. I love you today. I've realized that I need your love. Come in my heart. Become my Lord and my Savior. And I said, amen. And he said, amen. When I left him, he was different from the time that I met him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Favor is when you have the love of God for people and you give it to them. Some people are not lovable, but do your part to love them. After that, leave it to God. Hallelujah. Some people, you have to love them by a lot of prayers. Some people, you have to love them by faith. 
Some people you have to love them by a gift. Some people you have to love them by your smile. Some people you have to love them by your handshake. Some people you have to love them by a hug. Some people you have to love them by complimenting them. Brother, you look good today. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. A life of loving God. The more you love God, the more you will be full with the love of God and you will give it to us, to you give it to others. When you do that, you will find yourself always in the house of God. Because it is in the house of the Lord where it is easy to love people. And the more you are in the house of the Lord, the more you keep coming to the house of the Lord, you hear the word of God, you are loaded with the spirit of God of our life. Glory be to Jesus. Number two is a life of praising the Lord. A life of praising the Lord. Psalms chapter 34, verse number one. A life of praising the Lord. You see, when you are loved, your heart is at peace. When you love, your heart is at peace. You find yourself bubbling, you find yourself singing, you find yourself worshiping. You find yourself walking with a smile. There are some people who think they have to look gloomy all the time. They have never known joy. There are some people who, they, 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 they just carry this heaviness around them. They just carry this heaviness. You greet them, hi, hi. You, you can sense yeah, there's no praise around them. Hallelujah. How are you, brother? Fine. You, you, you can sense that. What they miss is praise. What they miss is praise. You see, in order to enter into favor, you have to have a life of praise. You have to learn to praise. You have to learn to open up. You have to learn to enjoy. I listened to some of the speeches last week and I could see praise. I could see joy. I, I could see happiness. Don't give a present when you're not happy. Don't, 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 don't act because I'm the only one everybody else has got. Don't do that. Learn to smile a little bit more. Learn, learn, learn to enjoy the life that God has given you. Learn to worship and praise God. Learn, learn to lose yourself and say, it doesn't matter who is looking at me, I'm looking for favor through praise. Hallelujah. So the psalmist in Psalms 34 verse 1 said the following, I will bless the Lord at all times. When will I bless the Lord? Some people, the only time they smiled was on Christmas. Others, it was on their birthday. When you tell them, sister, smile, this is how, who I am. You can't get favor like that. You've got to change from who you are to who he is. And he wants you to praise the Lord. So the Bible says, I will bless the Lord. When? At all times. At all times. That is not easy. When she has upset you, but you praise the Lord. Amen. That is not easy when somebody has done something wrong to you, but you do what? You praise the Lord. That is not easy when you are in the group you've been put and nobody found you in the week, but you still praise the Lord. That is not easy when you come from far, like King Jay, and uh, nobody recognizes that you drive for hours to come to church. That is not easy when you thought, today I'm looking nice, I hope somebody will notice my new hairstyle. And nobody says nothing about your hairstyle. But what do you do? You praise the Lord. Is that not what the Bible says? I will praise the Lord at all times. So you come to church, you're expecting brother so so to notice you. He always notices. And this Sunday he doesn't notice. You still praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You do what? There is a day that I ate a certain meal. It was not so nice. Amen. Uh, I looked at the meal, I said, Esh, this meal, the Lord reminded me, praise the Lord. I praise the Lord. I say, thank God I've got a meal to eat. Amen. Amen. 
praise the Lord when? All times. All times. All times. You have just come from a funeral. Somebody died in the family. You mourn. You finish mourning. You go back in praise. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. You finish mourning. You go back in praise. Your life is in praise, not in mourning. There are people who say, no, you know, I, I, I lost, you know, she was the only one. He was, the, he was my everything. You don't understand the life I grew up, you know, I owe it to them. You mourn, but you move on to what? Praise. To praise. Glory be to Jesus. I will praise the Lord at all times. At all times. At all times. Hallelujah. Then he says, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. In my mouth. How will we see that you are praising the Lord? We can see what is on your mouth. We can see what is on your face. We can see what is on your heart. The more you praise the Lord, you smile more. You will laugh more. You will enjoy God. You will enjoy life. You say, I thank God. I bless the Lord. And I want to just... Uh, uh, declare to you, my brother, that you know, God has been good to me. Hey, but you are still not working, but you know, God has been good to me. Even though I'm still not working, I have had so much peace. I know something is coming in my way. Glory be to God. You do what? You praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's a weapon to defeat the devil. When the devil upsets you, you praise him. You praise the Lord. When the devil does something uh, ugly against you, he wants you to, to be sulky. He wants you to have a bad countenance. He wants you to, 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 to want people. He want people to notice uh, you have a bad day. But the way to defeat the devil is to praise the Lord. Learn to praise the Lord. Learn to smile more. Learn to be happy as a child of God. Learn to enjoy life. Go to somebody that you don't talk to every day. Say, sister, uh, how are you? You know, I see you in church. What is your name? Get to know somebody. Hallelujah. And learn to praise the Lord. The Bible says, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Bless the Lord at all times. Bless him every morning, every night, every evening. Hallelujah. I'm reminded the day my son and I were watching our favorite soccer team and they lost so badly. And I thank God Pastor Dao was not there because he was going to tell us about our team. Uh, and I went to bed. I'm like, Lord, maybe I should stop watching soccer. Then the Lord said, Learn to praise me. Hallelujah. Even when your team has lost, you have that short moment. Move on to praise. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I hope I'm talking to somebody here this morning. So these are the keys of favor. Can you imagine God favors you? You are living in your nice life. And when people look at you, they don't see any joy. They don't see any happiness. I don't think God will bless people like that. Amen. God is preparing you to have this atmosphere so that when he blesses you, you are already a happy person. You are already an exuberant individual. You are already a joyful person. When people see you, they say, ah, that person, he was always happy as if he knew something good was going to happen to them. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Amen. I said, hallelujah. Amen. All right, lastly, let's look at uh, areas in which your favor must manifest. Areas in which your favor must manifest. Number one is you need favor. If you are owing, favor if you are owing. If you are owing, maybe on a house, maybe on a car, uh, maybe for Shini, some of you are still owing on some clothing shops. You need favor, and God can give you that favor. Exodus chapter 11, and verse number 2. You have borrowed from somebody, and uh, you don't know how to pay. Uh, you tried, you said, I will pay, and uh, you, you, you have struggled to, to pay. You need God to grant you that favor. It can happen to you. Exodus chapter 11, and verse number 2, and verse 3 as well. The book of Exodus chapter 11, and verse 2. Speak now in the ears of the people, and let every man of 
borrow of his neighbor, and every woman of their neighbor, jewels of silver and jewels of gold. Verse 3. And the Lord gave the people favor and the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, and the sight of Pharaoh, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and and the sight of the people. Hallelujah. So the Bible says every man borrowed. Right? Every man borrowed. This was a very unique instruction for God. Amen. In most cases we say it is good to borrow. Alright? It is not good. Leave it debt free. That's what they will tell you. Leave it debt free life. Don't borrow. Alright? But I know there are areas you need to borrow. For example, if you're going to buy a house, you need to borrow. You know, nothing wrong with that. If you're going to buy a car, maybe you need to borrow. But uh, in our normal life, we say, uh, try to avoid borrowing. But God came and he says, speak in the ears of all the people. Let every man borrow from their neighbors. They woke up, they took the kids, they said, we are going next door. They knocked next door. The whole family came. The Kumalos were standing at the door. What can we do? The father, the mother, the children. Uh, we have come to greet you. Uh, come in. They came in. And then one of the kids notices a teddy bear in the home and says, can I borrow a teddy bear? Yes. And also the other boy notices a nice baseball cap. Can I borrow this? The mother notices jewelry. Can I borrow this? And they all borrowed. Every man borrowed of his neighbor. Every woman of her neighbor. Jewelry of silver. Jewelry of gold. And maybe the father said, can I borrow your car? They borrowed the car as well. It was a unique way in which God deal with each one of us for favor. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Maybe you borrowed unknowingly. You didn't know whether the Holy Spirit was guiding you. But you need favor for God to cancel that date. So verse 3, let's go to verse 3. The Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people. Now you know the rest of the story. So God gave them favor. So what that means is when they borrowed, when they borrowed, the people they were borrowing from said, no, you can take extra. You can take as much as you can. And they took. Because you only borrow, you are expected to bring it back with interest. Yes. So you go to the machonitas, can I have 20,000? And they say, you're going to bring 30,000. Amen? Well, I'm just saying figures. I'm not sure about what they do. All right? You borrow 20,000 and they say you you're going to bring 30,000. So 10,000 is a profit. And so they'll give you more, like these ones. You need that favor. Where you have borrowed, and they give you more without knowing that God will intervene, that that day will be cancelled in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Favor like these brothers had in this year. I want to hear such kind of a testimony from you before the end of the year in the name of Jesus. That you borrowed and you didn't have to pay back for whatever it is. Are you here? Say, Heavenly Father, this is a miracle I need in my life in the name of Jesus. That when I borrow big, my debt will be cancelled in Jesus' name. When I borrow big, my debt will be cancelled in Jesus' name. This is a miracle of favor. Bible says there is nothing impossible with God. So if God could do it for the children of Israel, he can do it for each one of you. Claim it as a child of God. Say, God, it happened. You wrote it in the way that I read it. I am also a candidate of that. It can happen to you. Your house can be written off today. Your car date can be canceled today by this kind of favor. Hallelujah. So favor is very powerful. That's why I said there's no one who doesn't need favor. 
We saw in the beginning, uh, Ruth had favor, Esther had favor, but you who now is in a different generation, a generation of grace, you are trusting God for higher things, for favor. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I said hallelujah. Amen. I said hallelujah. Amen. You are owing, maybe you are owing on your rent. Favor can come to you that they write you a letter and they say, just forget it, let's start all over again. That's favor. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. That is favor. Praise the name of Jesus. People are laughing at you. They are saying, uh, uh, she's uh, You can see she, she's stuck. She has no way out. Without that guy, she will never make it in life. You need God's favor to lift you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You need favor from God to lift you up. Favor that is active in finances. When you buy a house, you have favor. They say this is a price, and then they bring it down. When you buy a car, finances, they say this is a price, and they bring it down. You need favor in finances. I said you need favor in finances. You need favor in finances. In Jesus' mighty name. May that favor locate you. May that favor locate you to the glory of Almighty Jehovah. Hallelujah. Number two, uh, you need favor to be promoted. You need favor for promotion. I hate to hear that somebody is working on a certain job. They've been working for one year, two years, three years. No promotion. Amen. You need the favor of God to be promoted. Genesis chapter 41. Genesis chapter 41. Hallelujah. Verse number 38. That there are individuals like this kind. I have interacted with a lot of people in my life. I have never known there is one like this one. He was talking about Joseph. He was talking about Joseph. Joseph appeared before Pharaoh. He's just like another man. And Pharaoh looks at him and he says to his leadership, Guys, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Can, can, can you, you guys discern what I'm seeing? This guy in front of us, can we find somebody like this? What made Joseph different was the favor of God. Hallelujah. Can we find someone like this one? As this is a man in whom the Spirit of God is. So Joseph comes and he's not a politician. He has never been to a school. He spent all his life in prison. He spent all his time thinking, my future is locked. My life is blocked. I'm going nowhere. He has one opportunity. He didn't even have a chance to write a CV. He is standing before Pharaoh. If Pharaoh was standing before you and he's talking to you and he says, can we find somebody like this one? You'll be worrying and thinking, Ish, what's going to happen to me today? I was cold, I was excited to come for the interview. Now Pharaoh is saying, can we find somebody like this one? What has he seen in me that is wrong in me? Why is he talking out of all this council? He's sitting in a king's chair and there are helpers here. Everything is elegant. Everything is, is excellent. And you are standing. You were brought by a guard. You are standing. And the king looks at you. And then he looks and he says, Can you see what I'm seeing? He looks the other side. Can you see this guy? You look at him from top to bottom. Have you ever seen something like this? That atmosphere on its own 
is very intimidating. You wish you'd run away. You'd wish you'd go away. You'd wish, why was I called? But then he doesn't end. He says, This is a man in whom the Spirit of God is. Favor will make people identify the Spirit of God in you. Favor will cause people to identify the Spirit of God that is in you. You will have said nothing, just your appearance. They'll be able to notice there's a spirit of God in this woman. There's a spirit of God in this man. That is what caused Joseph's lifting. Maybe the reason you're not being promoted is you're not carrying enough of the spirit of God. When you are in church, you are a good person. When you are at the workplace, you swear. You, you behave like the rest of them. Uh, you, 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 nobody knows you are a Christian. You, you, you talk more politics than you talk about your God. But maybe when you are at your workplace, they, they know you as just one of them. When they drink, you also drink. What they do, you also do. And so as a result, you are tempted, you are able, but they are sitting down on you, they can't promote you because they don't see the Spirit of God in you. They need to see the Spirit of God in you. Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this one? A man in whom the Spirit of God is. They need to see the Spirit of God in you. They need to see how you work. They need to see your dedication. They need to see your peaceful life. Before she resigned, my wife used to work with a very difficult doctor. This doctor's words were rough. He was a man who was raised from childhood swearing. All the F words, all the ugly words you could think of, that was his language. And then my wife resigned. And when she resigned, she was offered a job as a manager in a medical aid company. Guess who recommended her? The same thing to swear. I say, if you want somebody productive, be continue. What happens the difference? The Spirit of God in you. Even if they swear at you, don't lose the Spirit of God in you. Even if they insult you, don't lose the Spirit of God in you. That is where your favor is. That's where you be identified. Hallelujah. Say, I shall be promoted. Say, I have to be promoted. No matter the devil doesn't like me, I will be promoted. Verse 40. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. From the prison, the Spirit of God was on Joseph. He became a ruler in the land. You will also receive your promotion. Carry the Spirit of God. I said, carry the Spirit of God in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Lastly, we need favor for houses or land or a plot. You need favor to buy a house. You need favor to buy your own house. Even if it's a one-bedroom place, it is your own house. Even if it's a single-room place, you need that favor. Psalms chapter 44. Psalms chapter 44. And verse number 3. The book of Psalms 44. For they got the lands in possession by their own sword. Neither did their own arms save them. But they, so I'll take you again. But the right hand and thy arm, and the light of thy countenance, because thou hast a favor upon them. God is talking about the children of Israel. He said, 
they did not get the land or possession by fighting. They did not get the land by the ability to fight. They didn't get the land by the ability, their personal ability. It's good to buy a house by your own ability if you can. But when favor comes in your life, favor overlooks your ability. So the Bible says, for they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did they their own arm save them, but thy right hand and thy arm and the light of your countenance, because thou hast heard unto them. So they were men and women like us. They couldn't get certain things by their ability. Ability to fight. Ability to, 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 to save money. Ability to do certain things. But by the right hand of God. By the right hand of God. God intervened and he said, you are going to have this land called Canaan. Amen. There's a Canaan land for you. Is a Kenan land for you. Is a Kenan land for you. God wants you to be favored in the area of land. There's a war going on because between Ukraine and Russia. They are not fighting for anything else but the land. Israel has been fighting wars with the neighbors for some time. It's because of land. So when you have land, you are in a place of final favor. A property of your own, a house of your own, one room, but it's your own, two bedrooms, but it's your own, a piece of plot, and you say, This is mine, and you start to build on it, a mansion, a good place. He said, we'll sell you the land. It didn't work. And you tried all other means. You paid different people. It didn't work. You need the hand of God to intervene for that land. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I said hallelujah. Amen. All the landlords said amen. amen. Oh, you didn't hear me. I said all the landlords said amen. Amen. this year. May it happen in 2023. In the name of Jesus. May your land manifest in 2023 to the glory of Almighty God. Father, I thank you. I bless you. For those who have houses, those who are still owing, I pray that your favor will intervene to cancel the dates. Cancel the dates. Cancel the dates. Jehovah, there is nothing impossible with you. Cancel the dates. Cancel the dates in the name of Jesus. For those of God who are looking to you, trusting you, may your spirit be upon your people that they may be identified for promotion. Promotion like Joseph. Divine promotion. Big promotion. Great promotion in the name of Jesus. Father, this land you created it for your people every child who loves you I pray that the favor will manifest for the land favor for the house favor for the property favor for that house that building in the name of Jesus even as a ministry we stand oh God and declare favor for number 8 Jubilee Street in the name of Jesus by the anointing of the Holy Spirit ancient of days we worship and this is the reality. By your grace, we shall be there in Jesus' name. 
Someone say amen. amen. Appreciate God if you know favor is on your life. Hallelujah. Thank you.